you were selected by the, I think it was the Congregation of a Doctrine of Faith, correct me if I'm wrong, to be a visitator for the Society of St. Pius X. And you talked about this in a chapter of your book, Christus Vincit. And I would encourage everyone to read this book, Christus Vincit. It is a, an interview account with His Excellency. And uh, it's, it's, I can't stress how powerful this book is. I, 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 you're excellent. I wept in the opening chapters as you described your, your childhood, your parents, the, the environment and habitat of faith in which you grew up in a persecuted society and culture. But in the book, you talk about uh, your encounter and as a visitator of the Society of St. Pius X and in their, in their seminary life. And could you speak to that? What is the status? A lot of people ask, what's the status of the Society of St. Pius X? Is it schismatic? Is it irregular? Is it non-recognized? Um, can you share what you what you shared in the book and maybe add anything more? Uh, yes, firstly, we have to say what is schismatic. According to the tradition of the church, schismatic is uh, are people who are refusing, uh, in principle, the authority of the pope. Uh, la, let us say the the orthodox. They are called not heretics usually, but schismatics, right. because they are rejecting, in principle, the authority of the Pope. Yes. And so, but the, and then the, the fact of the Episcopal ordination without the papal uh, approval, it was in the old uh, canon law, not punished automatically with excommunication. And so only in the new code of canon law. So this is a difference. So the church, so many centuries did not consider the fact to ordain someone bishop without approval of Pope in say, right. as right. an schismatic act. Mm -hmm. And the church history shows us that, for example, the entire first millennium, the, the majority of the bishops were ordained without asking Rome, the Pope, for the approval. They simply ordained bishops in, in maintaining the unity with the Pope yeah. and mentioning him in the Eucharistic prayer or consulting the Pope in some, and so maintaining the unity in this way. Let us say all these saints which we know, Saint Athanasius, saying Basil, they were not ordained with the approval of the Pope, right. no, yeah. uh, and so on. We can make so many examples, and therefore this is not pertaining to the deposit of faith. The act of ordination can be done in different ways, mm. and if there is an emergency situation, emergency situation, to my opinion, is it is in which we are living, Mm -hmm. uh, even after the introduction of the new Mass, which is substantially a kind of Protestantization of the, the center of our life, which is the Holy Mass, even if it is celebrated correctly, the texts of the new Mass itself, like the offertory prayers, for example, right. the second right. canon, and so on, this is Protestantizing, without doubt. Well, this is only, um, I said this in, in bypassing, but continuing the, the, your question, my answer to your question. And so, uh, Archbishop Lefebvre had not a true schismatic intention when he ordained, because he asked until the last moment the Pope to approve this. So, if someone, usually the, her the schismatic bishops, they don't care of the Pope. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the Eastern Orthodox don't write to Rome. Uh, and even other, I uh, say the vacantes or other, uh, they, they even don't want to ask the Pope for permission. But Archbishop Lefebvre, they wrote several letters until the last moment with very much respect and reverence and asking that he, he, he wanted to ordain them with the approval of Rome. And 
all this is a demonstration that he was not, he did not this in a schismatic intention. It is obvious. And we have to be just also and fair. Mm -hmm. And in view of the great tradition of the church. And then he also mentioned the Pope during the ordination of the bishops in the canon of the mass. Yes. Was, and this is a proof that he maintained the desire to be united with Rome, but in specific historical difficult situations, he could not act in another way. And he did this not to make a new parallel church, and he said this, but to do a, a real help and a service for the Roman church itself, for the popes, who in the future, which God knows, will thank him that he did this. Yes. And I am sure that this will come. And now we are, we are looking, we are seeing this. And then, now, uh, concretely, after the, um, uh, after uh, Pope uh, Benedict XVI in 2009 lifted the, the excommunication uh, penalty, even from this time, they are not, not more excommunicated. And then people are, are not excommunicated they are not schismatic. Otherwise, the church yeah. would, the church would not lift, uh, revoke right. the right. penalty, mm -hmm. and so, and then it was only touching the four bishops, not the, the priests. And well, when we see the the according to the canon law, strictly uh, at literum to the letter, the priests and bishops are maybe suspended uh, in celebrating Mass because they are, have no incardination and, uh, and so. But now the situation changed because Pope Francis gave to all the priests of the Society of Pius X the faculties of confession. Mm -hmm. Ordinary, ordinary faculties. And, and now how can be a suspended priest, be an ordinary confessor. Right. It, right. Is, it is a contradiction. Yeah. And therefore, to my opinion, the Pope Francis with this act, in some way, he implicitly lifted also the suspension, the canonical, I mean. Yes. And, then, and then the possibility to assist canonically the, the marriages, also, how can a suspended priest assist canonically a marriage? And then in the provision of the Holy See, he's saying that it is also possible in some cases that after this uh, priest of the Society of the Pius X assisted marriage, when there is no other available priest, he can celebrate Mass mm -hmm. for the spouses at which all assist. Yes. And then it is not, how can the Pope permit a priest publicly celebrate a Mass who is suspended? Right. So we have to say now in this moment he is not suspended. And then finishing the Mass he is uh, again suspended. It is absurd to my opinion. Or when he is here in confession, in the confessional he is not suspended because the Pope gave him the faculties. Mm. And then when he goes out from the confessional and goes to the altar and celebrates Mass, then he is suspended. Yeah. We, we are in absurdity yes. because we are mm -hmm. interpreting the law in such a strict manner. Right. We are becoming Pharisees and scribes, yeah. really, because the church law is pastoral and all these laws are for the aim of the salvation of souls. And we have to always to keep this. Otherwise, when we are too much uh, stressing the, the human part of the law, the positive part, we become positivists uh, in the law. And this is a danger because we are forgetting the eternal salvation of the souls. 
and becoming in some way the mentality of the Pharisees and the scribes, which Christ uh, condemned, you know. And so, and therefore I consider that now this is a, a quite new situation, a substantial new situation of the uh, Society of Pius X after the lifting of the excommunication of the bishops and after the granting of the general faculties of confession and after the granting of the possibility to assist a matrimony and even to celebrate a mass for the spouses. And then, in de facto, also there are pre uh, bishops around the world who uh, publicly permit uh, the priests and the bishops of the Society of Pius X to celebrate public masses in exceptional cases. Right. So, and therefore, I think that there are so many bishops and priests in the world who are doing really blasphemies and sacrileges in the masses publicly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and they are not punished. Right. They are more hurting and offending our Lord and damaging the faith and the church entire than the priests of the society who, who piously celebrate the Mass as always did. Yes. Only because there is not yet resolved some problem of the positive law of the church, yes. which is subordinated to in an extreme situation which we are now living. Yeah, yeah I, re I remember Archbishop Lefebvre said, I read this, that in, in, in England they were allowing Methodists to have an ordination ceremony, which is invalid, inside of a Catholic cathedral. And yet he said, we cannot say the Mass for which that cathedral was built inside. The bishop won't let us go in there to say the old Mass for which that <laughs> that cathedral was built for this Mass. Those all those private altars all the way around were built for this mass. There's a Methodist ordination in there, and yet we cannot say the old mass in there. That that's a state of emergency. 